Scutellaria barbata, a Chinese herb related to common garden mint, has been used as an antitoxin in traditional Chinese medicine since the days of the Yellow Emperor 2,000 years ago. It is part of a vast resource of natural remedies that are increasingly attracting Western interest, helping the Chinese pharmaceutical industry to grow by 20% in each of the last three years. But researchers at the University of Salford's KidScans laboratories are ahead of the crowd. For 12 years, they've been extracting and researching the active ingredients of this herb in the laboratory, because one of its uses in Chinese medicine is in the treatment of cancer. They've discovered strong scientific reasons for this by studying the action of this extract on cancerous tumors. Research that's proved so promising, they've just received funding to take it through to clinical trials. We were interested in understanding how this active ingredient was working. And what we found out it was, was that um, it was targeting the blood vessels around the tumor rather than the tumor itself, which is what conventional chemotherapy is doing. It's uh, trying to stop the division uh, of cells in, in the cancer. Unfortunately, this also has side effects because it's also affecting normal cells. Um, so, so far, our studies have shown no side effects. Um, and um, we think that the treatment would be effective against about 90% of cancers. What they've developed are drugs that work in a new way. They change the structure of the blood vessels that surround tumours, cutting off the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the tumour, literally starving it to death. Filmed through a microscope, the action of the active ingredients on the cells surrounding the tumours is both rapid and dramatic. The pock marks appearing on the left are the cells changing shape as the drugs hit them. Tumour blood vessels are leaky and disorganised. A cancer needs a blood supply to grow, so it sends out all these messages to actually try and make its own blood supply form from existing blood supply that the body has. When that happens in a cancer, they, the blood vessels are growing so quickly, they're weak and they're disorganised which means that those blood vessels in the cancer, because of this weakness, are actually much more susceptible to the effects of the drug that makes the, the cells round up and block them. In this illustration, the proteins which assemble into polymers create the shape of the cell, but the drug, the white area in the middle, inserts itself like a doorstop between them, disturbing the structure and breaking up the cell. While cancers can develop resistance to existing drugs, requiring higher doses and becoming less effective over time, it is thought that this new range, because it only impacts on weaker cells surrounding the tumour, will not encounter resistance in the same way. And these drugs have other applications too, particularly in the treatment of diseases where the blood vessels grow rapidly, like endometriosis, a condition which affects thousands of women in the UK, and in conditions caused by diabetes. The drug um, targets is, um, microvasculature, and these conditions, um, like the macular degeneration, is a result of blood vessels growing in the eye of the diabetic patients. Eventually they become blind from this condition and so because of the drug's effect on uh, microvasculature or small blood vessels, we think it would be an effective treatment against this uh, condition as well. With additional funding by the Kids Can charity, Dr Sylvie Ducky and her research team should be able to develop these drugs for clinical trials in about a year's time ensuring they have no toxic side effects, of which there is so far no sign. This Chinese relative of mint offers the potential for a range of gentler, more natural drugs and the prospect of less toxic cancer treatments, particularly suitable for the treatment of young children. Nature's had four billion years to evolve the most exquisite molecules. No chemist would either think of making them or could probably even make some of the more complicated ones. But nature's actually given us the tools, tools that can have the most exquisite biological effects, many of which can be turned into drugs. Nature's got a lot to teach us.